Hey guys, it's Jonathan with Checks Vans. Today we're gonna to be talking about how we build wet baths or showers in our camper vans. Uh, this is an example of a finished product, self-cleaning Nautilus door, our Palisade faux tile. Um, we like to put a teak floor down that's removable, make it comfortable for your feet versus standing on pure, you know, steel shower basin. Uh, so wanted to show you a finished example of how this structure looks, uh, but today we're gonna walk you through the steps and the materials we use to get to this finished product. All right, let's talk about camper van showers. In my opinion, the camper van shower is probably one of the most difficult and complex things you'll build in these vans. And we'll explain why that is today. But before I get into that, what I'd really like to talk about is when and why would you put in a camper van shower? It really comes down to two major decision criteria. One is how do you think you'll be using this van? Uh, if you're planning to go off grid a lot, if you're highly active, you're mountain biking, you're at the beach, uh, you're skiing, snowboarding, and you really want to look forward to that ability to get in your van and shower off, um, you know, that, that comes into it. Uh, also, tailgate. Uh, I mean, you wanna be the hero at any tailgate, have a camper van wet bath, right? Instead of going and standing in line with 30 people at a Don's John at a concert, you can just hop in your van behind a closed door in privacy and do your business. The second criteria about a camper van wet bath is your layout. Do you have the space? What things are you willing to sacrifice in your van? Uh, as you'll see today, when we, when we walk you through our build out, it takes a lot of space in these vans. So you really have to decide if that compromise is worth it to you um, and, or whether or not you can get away with, you know, predominantly just an outdoor shower or a slide out drawer based uh, toilet of some sort. These are sort, the sorts of things that you'll want to consider. That said, Back to kind of the design principles around a camper van shower or wet bath. Uh, my feeling is that if you're going to make the decision to have a wet bath in these vans, then you're already telling yourself that you're likely going to be spending a lot of time in the van, number one, and you're likely going to be off grid. Because if those two things weren't the case, you could go to a local campground, you could park outside a friend's house, and you could a benefit from you know rinsing off and cleaning off in those environments. So if you've made the decision to go with a wet bath in your van, it's likely that you're planning to spend a lot of time uh, in the van off grid in remote locations where you won't have access to you know showering and things like that. So with that said, the way we build the vans and the complexity behind them means that you have to be very diligent about how secure this structure is because the last thing you want again this is a moving vehicle that bounces around that rattles that moves a lot you, the last thing you want is to have plumbing and drains and faucets shower heads that are rattling loose creating leaks all these sorts of things number one and number two my feeling has always been with these vans especially for full season full all weather all year living is while wood certainly works and is certainly viable, I tend to like to lean towards building vans with what we call extruded aluminum. It's an all weather product that's highly durable, um, very strong, but very lightweight. It's gonna give you completely square angles. You can lock everything down and just ensure that all of the structure in these vans, whether it's the shower, your overhead cabinets, your kitchen galley are incredibly strong. And so this is an idea of what extruded aluminum looks like. And there's all kinds of variations of this in terms of the number of channels. You can have a single channel, you can have dual channel, you can have four channels. They come in one by one inch, one and a half by one and a half inch, two by two inch, depending on the application. The other thing that's nice about this product, and this happens to be extruded aluminum from 8020, is all of the different ways that you can make connections. So if you could see here, we have an inside corner bracket that sits right in here. We have an outside L bracket. 
you have these 45 degree supports, right? And then you have all kinds of flat bars of varying, uh, you can get two hole or four hole. You have larger L brackets to give you more durability, you know, to come in uh, to these, uh, to secure down these brackets in more than one location. Uh, this is an example here on the end that I wanted to put in. This is what we build all of our furring strips out of in the van. This is a two inch by one inch piece of extruded aluminum that gives you a really, really nice place in the van to connect things to your walls. And we'll walk through that as well today. So this combination of all of these different tools at your disposal when working with extruded aluminum means that you can really build a very strong, very square structure using this product. Now, it is more expensive than wood. Um, a lot of brackets, a lot of uh, bolts, your, your slide in T-nuts or drop in T-nuts, you know, all of this, these, these tools at your disposal are gonna cost more than just going and building a, stru a structure with wood and nails or screws. Um, but in my opinion, especially if you're gonna build a four season van where you're on the road a lot, you just wanna, you know, in my opinion, you want the comfort that you know that your underlying foundation is, is highly strong and secure. So let's walk through a little bit about how we, we build the, the framing. We'll go through it in more detail. Um, there are some intricate cuts that are gonna likely be required because again, you're looking for a completely waterproof structure. And so there's gonna be places where your walls meet your shower pan, uh, where you're gonna want something that is, in, that is totally flush against your shower pan, not a piece of wood that sits behind the shower pan and then you're wondering how to silicone and seal where the pan meets the wood. So we do dado cuts for all of the pieces of walling that will meet up with the shower pan. And we'll, we'll show you that and, and dive into that in more detail. We paint all of our walls with a red guard material. So an example is this piece of wood here that's being prepared to go into the upper section of our shower framing behind me. We paint the wood with a red guard, let it sit in, and then we use a faux tile from Palisade that snaps together and these all get, you know, siliconed uh, watertight as well. And so your tile will sit against your wood walls like so. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of, you know, A, some of the reasons why you'd want to build a wet bath, B, the way we like to build not only the wet bath in our vans, but all of the underlying infrastructure um, with extruded aluminum. And then we'll walk through some of the areas where you're going to have a more intricate cut necessary so you get that really nice flush fit against your shower pan and then your tile will drop down into the pan and flush up against your wall just giving you a completely waterproof seal all the way inside your your steel uh your steel shower pan all right so we're inside the van here one thing that's really important to think through when you're preparing the design of your wet bath and really the placement of your shower wet bath a couple things come into play. Number one, how are you gonna run your plumbing? Where is your water pump and where your water uh, runs are gonna start? Do you have to traverse the van to get to where you're going? Are you on the same side as your water? How is your plumbing gonna run? Um, number two that's really important is, how do I drain the shower? is the placement of my shower and specifically the placement of the drain somewhere where I'm going to have fairly easy access to your tanks, whichever tank is going to accumulate the gray water uh, from your shower. So in this particular van, this is a Sprinter 144. There is a custom uh, 25 gallon uh, tank that sits perfectly behind the driver's seat on the driver's side underneath this area of the van. So once mounted, we have a direct uh, connection from this drain into that gray water tank. And we like to put motorized ball valves on our gray water tanks, again, so that you don't have to exit the van, potentially in inclement weather, to empty the gray water. 
it's all on a switch. You hit a button, the motorized ball valve will open, dump your tank, and then you can close it. Um, so these shower pans, we're very happy with. This is the third build now uh, that we've done using this particular brand and style of shower pan. It's a 24 by 36 that is custom made for us to have this lip here in the front. One of the benefits of having this lip in the front versus just a standard square 24 by 36 shower pan is it gives us the option to run our plumbing underneath the front portion of this pan. So we can access where our shower head and mixing valve are gonna be located uh, either you know, on the left wall or if we wanna get over to another wall, we have the ability to do it because what you will find is when you install the, the wet bath, you're gonna wanna maximize the amount of space in the van. And so coming off of this side wall, enough to where you can run plumbing or electrical behind it is very difficult. You'd be really eating into your living space, your hallway space in the van. So in order to maximize, uh, you know, or and reduce the amount of space and depth that the shower consumes in your van, um, it's nice to have this option on the front to allow us to run our plumbing underneath and, and have it uh, be hidden. As we get into where we start with all of this, the place we start is with the furring strips. So we use that two inch by one inch piece of extruded aluminum that I mentioned earlier, and we run these furring strips all throughout the middle of the van and all through the top of the van. And this gives us connection points eventually for overhead cabinets, for a fixed bed, to build your water box and battery box. And having these furring strips here becomes the connection point for your actual shower structure, okay? So we start with that. Um, from there, we begin to position and build out are framing in such a way that takes into consideration, again, the walls that will be installed and be riding alongside these 80-20 uh, joists, if you will, right? Now, one of the things you'll learn about working with 80-20 or extruded aluminum is you really have to think steps and steps ahead and in a perfect world, you wanna have a layout of what you're trying to accomplish done ahead of time so that you can preload the T-nuts necessary for these brackets. You'll notice here we have brackets that have been installed along these joists that we're gonna use as ways to connect our shower wall to the structure from behind, right? So we'll be screwing into this wall, giving us a really solid connection on the wall. Uh, so you want to make sure that prior to installing these cross beams that you've preloaded whichever, however many T-nuts you need for you to screw in and, and, and uh, install these brackets. Now, it's not the end of the world if you forgot a place or you forgot to do a joist outright because you can buy a drop-in T-nut, but they're way more expensive than a standard T-nut. So just consider that when you're, going, uh, when you're going through this build out. Um, so why did we do our walls a little differently here? You'll notice here I used two inch by one inch extruded aluminum on my left wall all the way up and two inch by one inch aluminum for my cross beams. The reason that I was able to get away with this is I don't need a lot of space on the left side of this wall. I just need enough space to turn my plumbing and head back to where my water pump and water heater and my water source is gonna be. However, on the right side of the shower, we created enough space inside of this wall to house our mixing valve. So you'll notice here, this is about a four and a half inch wide space here, which will allow us to run our plumbing between these cross beams and up into an area above where I'll have my shower head and to an area probably around the middle of this wall for my mixing valve and my hot cold dial. 
The other reason you want this wider space is because you're likely gonna have some power components. You're gonna have your shower light, which you'll see up here. What we like to do in our vans is put in composting toilets with a, an electric uh, vent fan. So we'll have a toilet fan, and so we'll have another switch available uh, for that toilet fan. And then you'll see a lot of wires in this particular build because on this back wall, we decided to house our, 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 our entertainment, our amp, our subwoofer, all of our speaker wires will be back here. Um, and so we needed to pre-run as much power as possible there. Now, the last thing I wanna just point out is in terms of just preparing for the build out, most of these vans come with this large cable loom from Mercedes, from factory, that's controlling all sorts of electrical components that came with the van from factory. So you wanna take this into consideration and make sure that this, this, all this wiring is, is out of the way and you've thought through how this wall will eventually come up to cover those wires and how your ceiling will meet that wall in order to give you a watertight connection in here. So, uh, we talked about the shower pan. We talked about the reasons why we have the front lip. We talked about how we like to dado this wall so that it fits nice and flush with the pan. And so we can run our tile directly into the shower pan. So there should, you know, completely eliminates any chance for, for, for water leaks. Now, you'll notice here that on the back wall of this build out, we had to run these 80-20 cross beams. So all of these cross sections with wood were built outside of the van. From the back side, they were secured using these flat bars. And then we brought these back into the van, installed them, secured them, uh, and now we have a solid, you know, I, I'm moving the van here. We have a solid back wall that we, we can now mount our, our shower to. All right, um, we created a ladder system along this wall so the front here or the back side of the shower will be all tiled this front will be one large front piece uh, and so we created these offsetting ladders you know some in the front some in the back so that we have again connection points for the back wall connection points for the front wall and then finally and this is probably one of the more difficult parts of this is ensuring that we have a solid ceiling mounting point so you'll notice here that we used riv nuts. So we drilled, we marked our holes. We did countersink uh, in these uh, in the extruded aluminum. We used riv nuts, and we are securing this top ceiling piece with these bolts with a flat area. So eventually, this could be framed out. And as you can see here, I'm hanging on it. So this shower is not going anywhere. This is not going to warp. This is not going to bow or flex. You're not going to have uh, screws popping out of this infrastructure. This is all incredibly solid uh, to give you a nice solid wet bath foundation. And then you'll notice here in the bottom of the shower pan, you have the flexibility. This pan sits about I think it's four inches high, if I remember right. Three inches high, actually. So um, depending on your height, uh, you know, you can walk into the shower and be standing on a nice teak floor. Or if you're taller and, you know, that's prohibitive to you, you know, we create two sections of flooring that simply come out of the van. And then now you've gained yourself an additional three inches of space. I'm about 5'9", so you can tell in this van I've got plenty of headroom. My shower head would be right here. My retractable door would go right here.
All right, so now once you have your back wall, your ceiling, your left wall in, um, we're gonna show you how we did the right side. Um, basically right here is our doorway and we're gonna have a little bit of a wall here. Um, so we've got two inch by one inch strip of 80-20 going from floor to ceiling. Um, and then on the back side here, because of the way this is designed, we have a one inch by one inch piece here framing it out. So we're gonna come in close here and we'll kind of show you how we put these supports um, so that we can put a wall on either side. So because of the fact that this is not a two inch by two inch, we can't come directly out. Get this light over here. We can't have our wall come directly out and attach with a uh, bracket like these in the front are. So what we actually did was we extended the piece all the way out here it's actually resting on this support beam and then we have a bracket on the inside. So I'll put this wall up, kind of show you. We uh, make these little notches right here. So that's gonna slide onto your walls gonna mount up just like that. All right, so what we like to do just to reiterate is this ceiling, you wanna make sure you're not cutting the ceiling on either side shorter than your side walls or back wall. You want this ceiling to be wide enough and deep enough so that when you put your back wall in and you put your two side walls in, that these are actually holding your ceiling in place. Um, <clears throat> just make sure, you know, just gives you a, a tighter fit here and just something else for the ceiling to be secure against rather than potentially it falling through or also will make the tiling and the grouting and your waterproof ceiling that much better. All right, you'll notice this line, these lines that we drew. Um, these lines are where our tile ends. And you'll notice this slight gap. This slight gap is the thickness of the tile we're using. So just by way of example, if we put this last piece in here, nice and secure, and then we take a piece of the tile and we slide it up against this wall. You'll notice it's perfectly in line with, with this black guideline. So on this wall, the tiles will end right here, right up against this one. And uh, you'll know you're all set. You'll have a really tight fit here. And then this will have waterproof corner beading all throughout the, the seams and the corners, silicone, and you should have a waterproof, watertight shower. All right, guys, we're gonna about to wrap up this part one. Um, we're gonna come, up, come out with a second part, a part two, that will dive further into how we're doing the plumbing, the mixing valve, uh, the shower head, um, as well as the tile. And we'll show you how all the tile came in here. Um, but we really wanted to just spend this first part going through all the framing, how everything's interconnected, how the walls were built, and the sequence by which the walls went in. Uh, we'll do some close-ups uh, once the final framing is done with all the proper brackets. Remember that we staggered these ladder <clears throat> connections. So we had some that will eventually be used to connect the front wall, others that will be used to connect the inside shower wall. Uh, so we'll show you some close-ups of that as we, as we wrap things up, but hopefully uh, this made a lot of sense to you and helps you out. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please post them and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks.